mahirap talaga siya. Uh, mahirap talaga siya. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! My name is Kay and welcome back to my channel. So right now, what we are going to talk about is how did I study for my first year subjects in medicine, specifically biochemistry, anatomy, physiology, and microanatomy. Disclaimer lang po, ano, bago tayo magsimula, hindi ako dense lister, hindi rin ako uh, a lister student, I am just an average medical student, and what I will be sharing to you guys are my experiences during my first year medicine, and um, always remember that the things that have worked for me might not work for you, and the things that might work for you might have not worked for me. So let's start! Yung mga subjects na aaralin natin by first year, especially yung four major subjects na nabanggit ko, sobrang halaga nun kasi it will serve as a foundation sa pag-aaral natin ng medicine. For example, yung anatomy sobrang halaga nun sa pag-aaral ng surgery, while yung physiology naman sobrang halaga nun when it comes to studying pharmacology, especially yung mga topics such as second messengers and the receptors, Yung microbiology naman, sobrang halaga nun when it comes to studying pathology when we are trying to examine certain diseases on a microscopic level. What I am trying to say is that kapag sobrang hina ng foundation natin ng first year, mahihirapan na tayong pag-aralan yung mga second year subjects kasi yung mga second year subjects magsasangasanga na yun. For example, when we are doing a surgery, pre-op, kailangan alam natin yung pathology ng disease ng tumor na tatanggalin natin, for example. And while we are doing the surgery, kailangan alam natin yung tamang gamit and yung tamang steps on how we are going to remove the lesion. Samahan pa natin ng konting anatomy kasi if we legated the wrong vessel, it may lead to certain complications. And syempre, kapag post-operation, kailangan natin bigyan ng certain medications yung patient natin at doon naman papasok yung tamang foundation when it comes to pharmacology. So, in conclusion, yung mga pag-aaralan natin simula first year up to the third year interconnected yun to each other. And then, mahalaga na maganda yung foundation natin by first year para pagdating natin ng second year and ng third year, hindi tayo masyadong mahirapan. Disclaimer lang po ulit, ano, I am still on my second year and I am hoping to be third year a few weeks from now and what I will be sharing to all of you are my experiences during my first year at sabi nga nila, marami pa akong kakainin bigas. I still have a long way but still, I hope that this video will help you ace your first year subjects. Also, sasabihin ko sa inyo yung mga bagay na natutunan ko aside from that, yung mga bagay na pinagsisisihan ko na hindi ko ginawa when I was in first year kasi meron mga bagay na marirealize mo kung kailan tapos mo na. But before we begin, when it comes to studying these certain subjects, as a general rule, kailangan pag nagbabasa tayo, bawat sentence na iintindihan natin. So kapag meron tayong word na hindi maintindihan, we just need to google it or to search the definition of it para masigurado natin na naiintindihan natin yung sentence na yun before tayo mag-proceed to another sentence. First off is anatomy. When I was in first year, sobrang takot akong pag-aralan yung anatomy kasi sobrang haba ng mga trances and yung mga books na kailangang basahin. Kaya sa pag-aaral ng anatomy, may advantage dito yung mga visual learners or yung mga taong nakakapag-aral kapag nakikita nila yung pinag-aaralan nila. It is really important for you to see what you are studying in anatomy. So, my tip would be, when studying anatomy, you need to have an atlas by your side. Preferably, atlas by netter. Importante kasi dito na nakikita mo rin yung binabasa mo kasi hindi mo siya maiintindihan kapag hindi mo siya nakikita. And also, when studying cadavers, make the most out of it. Parang grab every chance para makita mo yung every nerve, every blood vessel na kailangan nung makita. And don't forget to compare your atlas sa cadaver na makikita mo kasi yung cadaver, it will matter during the practical exams. Also, when it comes to cadaver, always remember to compare every cadaver sa laboratory kasi hindi maganda or hindi advisable 
na magpo-focus ka lang on a certain cadaver kasi syempre iba-iba yung itsura ng certain blood vessels, muscles, nerves, etc. sa iba't ibang klase ng cadaver na makikita natin sa laboratory. For example, when studying certain segments of the liver na makikita nyo sa gilid, it will be important to see what you're reading kasi a certain segment has an adjacent structure na kailangan iwasan or kailangan ilagate depende sa sitwasyon during a surgery. Next up would be the physiology. Now, when studying physiology, always remember na it's like studying a big, big cycle or studying a domino effect. For example, kapag mataas ang insulin level natin, na ano yung certain hormones or certain organs na matitrigger para mag-produce yung balat natin ng napakaraming sebum which will lead to increase pimple production. Another example, kapag nag-bind ang ligand sa certain receptor, ano yung mga actions na matitrigger? At ano yung mga mangyayari sa organs na apektado nun? So, ganon yung pag-aaral ng physiology. So, in studying the normal processes in the body, which is the main foundation of physiology, kailangan wag natin ignore yung mga diagrams sa book. Kasi, it will be important for us to see kung ano yung mga magbubukas na channels, for example, kapag nagbind ang certain ligand sa iisang receptor. First year ako, akala ko kapag nabasa ko na yung libro or yung trans, okay na ako without analyzing the diagrams and the picture na makikita sa book. Ngayong second year na ako, narealize ko na sobrang importante ng mga diagrams and do mga pictures sa book kasi doon mo matetest kung naintindihan mo ba yung inaral mo. Okay, the third one would be the biochemistry. I will be honest to all of you guys, biochem is one of the hardest subjects in medicine. Kahit ako ngayon, feeling ko nakalimutan ko na yung inaral ko sa biochem. Actually, hindi lang biochem kasi parang lahat ata nakalimutan ko na. But anyway, nung first year ako, kwento ko lang, story time lang tayo. Nung first year ako, the night before the first quiz, umiiyak ako sa kama ko habang hawak ko yung index card. Tapos, yung topic nun ay amino acids, proline, valine, threonine, serine. Hindi ko alam kasi sobrang takot talaga ako sa biochem, to be honest. Siguro, yung pagkakamali na nagawa ko when studying biochem in first year is that kapag nakakita ako ng mga diagrams and ng mga cycles, I always choose to ignore it kasi na-overwhelm ako eh. Parang natatakot ako. Ngayon, ang maipapaya ko sa inyo, Please don't ignore these diagrams kasi sobrang halaga nun. And then, doon mo rin matetest kung na-analyze mo pa talaga yung inaaral mo. For example, when it comes to studying this certain amino acids na makikita nyo sa gilid, kailangan na alam natin yung basics. For example, bakit meron kang aromatic cream dyan? Bakit meron kang double bond dyan? Bakit meron kang carbon dyan? Bakit meron kang H2N dyan? Bakit? We need to answer these things para kapag nakita na tayo ng napakahabang structure, eh, hindi na tayo magulat. Kagaya nga ng sinasabi ko kanina, analyzing this structure will be our foundation when it comes to understanding and studying biochemistry. For example, mahihirapan tayong mag-titrate ng certain amino acids kapag hindi natin alam yung structure or yung itsura ng amino acid na yon. If you don't know about titration, don't worry. Pag-aaralan nyo yan during your first year. Ngayon, sa pag-aaral ng microanatomy, para ka rin nag-aaral ng gross anatomy. Ang difference lang, nag-aaral ka using your microscope. Kaya, sa pag-aaral ng microanatomy, mahalaga na alam natin yung basics ng pagkalikot ng microscope. Kasi, if doon pa lang, hindi na natin perfect or hindi na natin alam kung ano yung pinagkaiba ng HPO, LPO, and such, mahihirapan tayong mag-aral ng microbiology. Just like anatomy, when it comes to studying microanatomy, kailangan meron din tayong atlas sa tabi natin. Kasi kapag titignan natin yon sa microscope, yung certain structure na yon mahalaga na makompare natin siya sa atlas 
para during practicals, hindi tayo mahirapan masyado. Another tip when it comes to studying microanatomy, always maximize the laboratory time kasi iba yung itsura ng slides kapag sa cellphone mo lang or sa printed sheets mo lang titingnan unlike kapag nakita mo talaga sa laboratory kasi during the practical exams kapag alam mo sa sarili mo na nakita mo yon during the laboratory mas mataas yung chance na ma-recall mo yung pinag-aralan mo kasi nakita mo nga yon personally hindi lang sa papel or hindi lang sa monitor Kagaya nga ng sinabi ko kanina, studying microanatomy is really essential for studying pathology kasi ang pinagkaiba ng dalawa is that when studying microbiology or microanatomy, ang titingnan lang natin ay yung mga normal cells na makikita natin sa katawan natin. When it comes to pathology naman, doon na natin makikita yung mga abnormal cells kapag nagkaroon na siya ng certain diseases or certain lesions. Sa syllabus namin, ang microanatomy na hahati sa tatlo. Una is microanatomy, yung pag-aaral ng cells. Pangalawa is embryo embryology, which is a study for development. And then lastly, the neuroanatomy. Ngayon, yung mga tips sa microanatomy na sabi ko na kanina. Now, when studying embryology, ang ginawa ko neto nung first year, nanood ako ng videos sa YouTube on how the embryo develops kasi mahirap if magbe-base lang tayo sa microscope kasi merong mga certain slides na certain section lang yung makikita mo so mahalaga na kapag nag-aaral ka ng embryology makikita mo rin yung step by step development ng embryo ngayon naman when it comes to studying neuroanatomy Mahirap talaga siya. Uh, mahirap talaga siya. <laughs> Ayun na nga. Mahirap talaga mag-aral ng neuro. Yun yung uh, isa sa mga subjects na humila sa microanatomy bigligit ko kasi nahirapan ako sa neuro, to be honest. Ngayon, ang maipapaya ko na lang talaga ay uh, magdasal. Kasi mahirap. No joke, mahirap talaga ang neuro. For me ha, pero meron na akong mga classmate na nag excel naman sa subject na 'yon, pero ako personally mahirap lalo na kapag sinamahan mo na ng physiology. Ngayon, I hope na tulungan kayo ng video na 'to na magkaroon ng bird's eye view when it comes to studying this certain subjects at yung mga i-expect mo sa mga subject na 'to. Kasi at the end of the day, it will all boil down to you. Kung paano mo intindihin yung mga binabasa mo at kung gaano mo kagusto na mag-aaral ng medisina. Ngayon, kung nagustuhan nyo tong video na to, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button below. And I will be seeing you again sa ating mga susunod na vlogs. Yun lang. Bye-bye!